Hello and welcome to the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Daisha and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. First, your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists will not be able to see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time and they will be able to respond to you. This is one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website for other sessions happening today and tomorrow. This presentation is being recorded and it will be available at strivescan.com slash Texas. And without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, Wichita State University. Thanks so much. Oh no. Is my audio working? Okay. Um, well, welcome. Um, my name is Chandra Crawley and I represent Wichita State University. Um, I'm coming to you today from the Dallas area. So I am here in Texas, just like you all. Um, I'll dive right in um, with some quick facts about Wichita State, as you can see many on the screen there. Um, lots of campus events. We have a, a student population of about 16,000. So it's a nice mid-sized university, not too big, not too small. Um, you can see 39% of our students come from diverse backgrounds. That's something we're very proud of, something we celebrate highly. We also have about 44% of our students that are first generation. We have a ton of resources kind of tailored to those students as well. Um, you can see that we are the largest city in the state. So Wichita State is located in Wichita, Kansas. Um, we're about a five and a half hour drive from the Dallas area. So if you're in the Houston area or further south, um, you can kind of gauge it that way. Um, over 300 student organizations, so lots of different opportunities for you to get involved in fun at Wichita State. That's definitely something we like to focus on in addition to being kind of, you know, being serious about our academics and um, getting you some great experiences. We are division one in the American Athletic Conference. So you as students get tickets uh, to all of our athletic events, all our fine arts events included with your student fees, as well as a YMCA membership, which we just opened one of those on our campus um, within the last few years. So that's really exciting. Um, you can see eSports, um, that's something newer to us, but we have a really nice lab and four varsity teams for that. Um, and I also will mention that we have a marching band for our basketball team, so something different that you can remember, but you see that basketball arena full of people in the bottom right there. Um, and then we also have an Army ROTC, so lots of different things for our students to engage in on our campus. Um, as you're kind of thinking about what major to select and the different programs that we offer, um, we have over 70 different majors. Here are some of our more popular options. So really aerospace engineering is probably our absolute number one major. Um, anything engineering is gonna be very solid with us though. You can see we have some great research dollars, um, some really awesome facilities for all of our engineering programs. Business is gonna be much the same. You're not gonna go wrong with any of those programs. That dual accreditation really does a lot for us. Um, we have some focuses in real estate, if that's something that interests you as well. Um, in the fine arts, we have strong programs, you know, ranging from our dance and music theater all the way over to our media arts. So our filmmaking, audio production, animation, game design are all going to be um, up and coming strong programs for sure. They have a really awesome studio called Shocker Studios that they work out of. Um, our criminal justice and forensic science are very popular. If you want to teach, we have some great um, opportunities for you there. We have a wonderful nursing program, a four year dental hygiene program, so a little bit different, um, but a great option if that's what you're really interested in. And then you can see others in the health professions. Social work is popular. Sport management, you can see, is a top 20 program in the nation. So that's one we're really proud of. Uh, and it also is popular. Um, you could also major in honors or minor in honors. Not the most popular option, but just kind of an option if you're looking to mix mix it up a little bit. Um, one thing we really hang our hats on at Wichita State is our applied learning opportunities. So um, we like you to start doing these as early as your sophomore year of college. It really is a great way to get you paid. As you can see, 96% of those are going to be paid, but also 
you build your resume um, and get some really great experience that you know sets you um, apart from others that may be applying for those same jobs. So you can see several students there. You know, these are not internships that they're just getting in their senior year. We want to place you in those, um, like I said, super early so that you can get into that dream job right out of the gate. Um, our innovation campus is something that is really helping us do this. So we've got academics buildings on the on our this side of campus. We have businesses as well. So Airbus is here. NetApp is going from a smaller business um, to a large one on our campus, Deloitte. Um, you can see several others listed on the right here. We have um, a new business building that will open in this summer. Our engineering building opened um, several years ago. We have a law enforcement training center over there. You can see the YMCA is on that side of campus. A couple of our newest housing facilities over there. And then some fun things, shops, dining, a hotel, um, all kinds of great things that you'll see over on that innovation side of campus. Um, definitely also wanna let you know about a couple things financially. Any Texas resident gets to pay a reduced tuition. So instead of paying over 18,000 for out-of-state tuition, you pay $12,222 for tuition fees. That's kind of the going rate this year. Um, in addition to that, if you are in one of the larger metro areas, you see that you get even a more reduced tuition rate. So we go by county and they're quite broad. So tons of counties are listed in our Texas section for our Shocker City Partnership. Um, if you're not sure if you um, qualify for this, I could help you out. Just let me know what county you live in and we can see if you're going to qualify for that Shocker Select being a Texas resident or if you specifically get to pay 8800 for tuition and fees for the year. So that's a big deal getting that out of state experience, um, but that in state tuition. And as our, far as our admission criteria, pretty simple. Um, we are test optional. So if you have a 2.25 unweighted high school GPA, that's all you need to get admitted. Or we can look at those test scores you see on the screen. Um, we have our own application and that's the easiest way to get applied to us. Um, that application fee waiver is built into that as well. So if you qualify for that, it's a really simple process. Um, since we are before December 1st, I wanna make sure you know about freshman merit. For any seniors, um, this is kind of how it works. You know, you apply and you're admitted. We're going to automatically go in and look for the baseline of a 3.0 unweighted GPA and then also either a 21 ACT or a 1060 SAT to get you automatic money um, that first year and a few years beyond. Um, lastly, you know, come for a visit if you can. Um, if you can bring some friends, definitely do that. You will find our in-person, virtual, and recorded sessions from last year um, at that wichita.edu slash visit link. And if we have at least two weeks notice of your visit, you can meet with an academic department. But I will leave you with my information. Um, please feel free to contact me if you think you'll have any questions. I would be more than happy, happy to help. Thanks so much and have a great night. Awesome. Thank you, Wichita State University. Our next presenter is Washington State University. Awesome, thank you. We go from one WSU to the other. We get each other's um, emails all the time, or at least also we get Wichita State's emails all the time. So exciting to see y'all here. Um, all right, hopefully we can see uh, my screen. Uh, my name is Micah DeMarco. I'm one of the admissions counselors for Washington State University. I'm actually not your admissions counselor, but your admissions counselor is recruiting in Hawaii right now. So we feel bad for her, but uh, someone's got to do it. So um, I have been the Texas rep before though. So I do know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Um, I'm a third generation Washington State University graduate. My grandparents met on campus. My parents both went here and I graduated a couple of years back. This is what I do now full time. Time. We'll start with the basics. Where is W.C. Pullman located? We're in eastern Washington, right on the border of Idaho. So oftentimes when folks think of Washington, they'll think rainy and they'll think cold, Seattle, Space Needle, Grey's Anatomy, all of that is true, just not for where we're located. So Eastern Washington, opposite end of the state from Seattle, it is a total college town. When I say total college town, I mean that the city of Pullman is two thirds college students. Uh, when school is in session, that means the average age of a, somebody living in Pullman is 22.1 years old. It is incredibly young. Uh, we do have our own airport. So students typically will fly in and out of the Pullman airport. There's flights from Seattle and you can get just about anywhere from there. So as long as you can get to Seattle, you can get to us. 
one of the things I love most about Pullman is it's a college town. So everyone's moving to Pullman for the first time together. Uh, it really makes it a, a welcoming community because everybody's new. Uh, it also means we're incredibly safe. We're one of the safest schools in the country. We're the safest in Washington. Um, and it's uh, the safest in the Pac-12 conference as well. So something, especially as a female, that I enjoyed about Pullman. Things to do, athletics will be big, or Division I school for sports, lots of entertainment clubs, fraternities, sororities. We're a big school. We have all the big school amenities, uh, so you guys can see them up there. The one that I do like to point out that is, is very unique to us is Greek life. We are one of three schools in the country that has an increasing number of students involved in Greek life, uh, so that'll be a big draw for many of our students. Um, and like I said, we're a college town. Everyone's new to Pullman, and so that involvement piece will play an especially big role to WSU Pullman students. With academics, big school, all the majors you might expect. Some of our biggest will be business, engineering, computer science, and pre-health. We do have our own med school, vet school, nursing school, and pharmacy school. We're tier one for research. Uh, we've got study abroad programs everywhere. I think the biggest thing for you all to know uh, is that students apply to WSU and not into a major. So if you tell us today business, tomorrow music, and the next day engineering, you're welcome to switch around. We're not holding you to what you think you want to study when you first apply. Speaking of the application process, it is very simple. If it takes you longer than 20 minutes, you're on somebody else's application. Uh, we are just looking at your high school transcripts for admissions purposes. So uh, we're looking at the grade trends that you have, the classes you've taken, et cetera. Um, we are um, not looking at anything outside of those transcripts. So no SAT or ACT scores, no letters of recommendation, personal statements, et cetera. And any student who applies with a 3.6 unweighted GPA or higher will automatically be admitted into the university. So pretty quick turnaround time. We'll talk super briefly about costs. I'm gonna have this up here just so parents especially can look at it. But first I wanna talk a little bit about some of our out-of-state scholarships. Students are um, automatically considered for these as long as they meet our deadlines and we'll discuss those uh, but students with a 3.0 to a 339 unweighted gpa automatically receive a seven thousand dollar per year discount on tuition for four years so seven times four or those of you with the three four or above automatically receive eleven thousand so if i flip back super quickly um you'll see an eleven thousand dollar reduction off of tuition will get you pretty close to what an in-state student is paying the other thing to know is housing and dining for First year students is mandatory. Um, you'll live in one of our residence halls. After that, it's really up to you where you live and these costs come down substantially. It is cheap to live in Eastern Washington, at least our area of Eastern Washington. So we'll see a lot of students save quite a bit of money uh, after freshman year. Finally, dates and deadlines. Our app's open now. Everything's due to us by January 31, and that's an especially big deadline to keep in mind if you like free money. And then we uh, use the national confirmation deadline of May 1, so that's when students have until to tell us yes or no. Finally, all my contact information is up here. I'm happy to answer any questions any of you have. Um, and while I'm not your admissions counselor, I'm still a good point of contact and I can always get you in contact with your personal admissions counselor. So uh, thank you guys and go Cougs. Thank you, Washington State University. Our next institution is the University of Wyoming. Hello everyone, my name is Alicia Johnson. I am with the University of Wyoming. And so I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about the University of Wyoming today. Um, really quickly, this mountain range here on our first slide is um, the Medicine Bow National Forest. And Medicine Bow um, Peak is one of the peaks right here. Um, it is over about 12,400 feet. And this is about 40 minutes from our campus. So it's a really great area to come and do all things outdoors, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Um, we are in um, Laramie, Wyoming, which is in the southeast corner of the state of Wyoming. We are about two and a half hours north of Denver, Colorado. So a lot of students will fly in and out of Denver. We do have an airport in Laramie, but we um, most students will fly in and out of uh, Denver because it's the biggest major airport to us. We are the only university in the state of Wyoming, which is kind of crazy, but we are the only one. Um, we are a land grant institution, um, which I love. I love that we're founded to be accessible for all students. 
um, in education. We are about 32,000 students in the town of Laramie. We are definitely a college town. Everybody supports UW. Um, you wouldn't think that you'd be able to make brown and gold work as a color scheme for you, but you can. Uh, everybody does here. And the bucking horse is called Steamboat, our logo, and it's on everything. Fire trucks, ambulances, trash cans, it's everywhere. So the whole state supports um, UW, not just Laramie, which is kind of cool. Um, as I mentioned before, we are about 40 minutes from the Medicine Bow National Forest. Um, we're in a valley and we're surrounded by about 2.9 million acres of national forest, which is really exciting. Um, so you can literally, I tell students, you can do anything you could ever want to do outdoors here. Um, we're about 30 minutes away from skiing and snowboarding. Um, we have some of the best snowmobiling trails in the nation here. Um, we have also some phenomenal mountain biking and rock climbing. Um, so if you like to hunt, fish, hike, bike, rock climb, ski, this is the place to come. So if you want that to be part of your college experience as you're going to school and being able to be outdoors, this is definitely the place for you. Um, we are at 7,220 feet, um, so we are at a pretty high elevation. Uh, so just make sure that you have some water with you when you come. Uh, that is always the um, big thing I tell people when they come visit us. All right, I'll talk a little bit about um, just UW in general. We are about 11,800 students total. Um, we are a little bit um, over 9,000 undergrad students. Our average class size here is about 30 students and a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. We are a division one school. We're in the Mountain West Conference. We have about 17 um, sports here on our campus with about 400 student athletes. So, our makeup here on campus, we have students from all 50 states in 83 different countries. Um, we are about 57% in-state students and about 43% non-resident students. And our incoming freshman classes usually split about 50-50. We have lots of great majors and programs here at the University of Wyoming. We have 200 areas of study. Um, we have eight colleges and two schools. Some of our more popular majors are definitely engineering. We have some top engineering programs here. We also have a great nursing program, business program, as well as agri agricultural programs as well. Um, areas to definitely have majors and minors. We also have a pharmacy and a law school here as well. So lots of different things to do. One of my favorite things I like to talk about is our study abroad program. We have the largest endowed study abroad program in the nation. We were so lucky to get this endowment. Um, we have students that are able to study abroad in 400 different areas um, worldwide, and we have domestic locations as well. Um, one of my biggest regrets is not studying abroad while I was in school, so I always encourage students to do that. Um, I also know that many students regret, when I've talked to them, they regretted not studying abroad, so definitely look into it. We have a lot of scholarship opportunities through this endowment for students to be able to study abroad. So we have a lot of support systems in place here at the University of Wyoming for students to be successful, obviously advising, counseling, tutoring, all those types of things here. So if you need help along your way at all through your education process here at the University of Wyoming, we have those things in place to help you. So we'll talk a little bit about financial aid here. About 95% of first time students receive a scholarship, some type of scholarship or financial aid with us. Um, we are consistently ranked as one of the best value institutions um, to come to, specifically out of state. Um, we are a great option um, for students to come out of state and it still be affordable. So I'll talk a little bit about our out-of-state scholarships right now. We have our Brown and Gold Commitment, and this is a scholarship that will be um, based on merit and awarded uh, when you apply. So we look, we are test optional for this um, scholarship, but we also have an option for you to submit an ACT or SAT score if you have one. Um, the ranges of this scholarship can be anywhere from 2500 to 12000 and this is annual amounts for four years, as long as you maintain a 3.4 GPA. And you can see the full grid of this online on our website to see where you might fall if you have an ACT or SAT score or if you're just looking at your GPA. Our admissions requirements are four years English, Math, and Science, and three years Social Science. Um, we look at a cumulative unweighted GPA of a 3.0 or higher. And again, we are test optional for admission as well for fall 2022. It is pretty straightforward to apply to us. 
Um, we don't require an essay and we don't have an interview process. You can apply with us through the Common App or on our website as well. We have our own application and we have a $40 application fee. I definitely encourage you to come visit us. Um, if you have any um, requests of where to go eat or hike or do anything outdoors, I can always give you those recommendations. Um, but definitely come take a tour with us. We have lots of virtual options as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call. Happy to help with um, any questions you might have about the University of Wyoming. Thank you, University of Wyoming. Our next presenter is the University of Kansas. Oh, sorry, just a second. <laughs> Oh, you love when Zoom just, <laughs> there we go, everyone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amy Nelson. I'm Assistant Director of Admission at the University of Kansas. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, so if you, anything all about KU, just go to ku.edu. Our admissions page is admissions.ku.edu. But let's take a little bit of a deep dive into the facts of the University of Kansas. So we are a medium-sized university. Um, about 19,000 undergraduate students, but when you put all of our campuses together, we have 11 schools on our Lawrence campus, but we also have campuses in um, Wichita, Kansas City, Kansas, Salina, Kansas. We have a School of Medicine um, at the school um, over in Kansas City, Kansas. So when you put them all together, it's about 28,000 students. We are an a AAU institution, Association of American Universities. Um, it's a, it's a we feel it's a prestigious honor. We're one of 65 universities with this designation. Uh, we're a tier one research institution. Um, we give our students opportunities for undergraduate research starting their freshman year. And we definitely encourage that, especially if you are undecided what you wanna major. Research is a great way to open up academic doors and maybe interests that you maybe never ever thought of. Um, with our 11 academic schools, uh, we have several that are nationally ranked, that are freshman admitting. We have our School of Engineering that's freshman admitting, School of Architecture and Design, um, School of Business, School of Journalism, um, just to name a few. Um, other schools, School of Nursing, um, you would apply for once you're a student at KU. And our School of Education and Human Sciences, they just went to freshman admitting this year. So we're very excited about that. Um, Lawrence is an awesome place to spend four years of your college career. It's a, one of, and Disney is a top 10 college town. About 90,000 people live in the city of Lawrence itself. Um, and there's about 500 miles of hiking and biking. If you'd love to get outdoors, we've got that in Lawrence for you. We've got lakes around um, the city of Lawrence. So lots of great ways to have um enjoy the outdoors in Lawrence, but also our hospitality within Lawrence. And then we have, when it comes to academic, we have over 400 areas of study, 200 academic majors to choose from. And then just kind of a breakdown of what the student population is like. We have about 60% of our students are from in-state, 40% are out of state. And then we have students from every state in the United States and 110 different countries at KU. So, and then your classroom experience. Um, we try to keep the classroom experience um, pretty low. So we do try to uh, make sure that you're not in large classes at KU and yet you're getting a truly academic experience at KU. And then one thing that I'd love to talk about, I know others have talked about is study abroad. Um, we are ranked 18th in the nation when it comes to undergraduate participation in study abroad. And about over 28% of our students study abroad. So we have over 160 different programs in 70 different countries. And one of our oldest programs is actually in Costa Rica. Um, it's the, one of the oldest programs in the Western Hemisphere. So we're very proud of that too. So how do you become a Jayhawk? First thing is to get that application done. And apply.ku.edu. We take the Common App or the KU app on our website. And we do have the test optional pathway for both admissions and for scholarships. And then our admission requirements are as follows. Um, we, for the test optional, if you have a 3.25 on a 4.0 scale, 
um, you are admitted into KU. Now, when it comes to some of the other schools, like School of Engineering, School of Architecture, um, School of Business, the this will get you into the University of Kansas. Um, but for some of those other um, advanced schools, they may take a look. Um, they may need a higher GPA. So do um, talk with us if you have any questions about getting admitted into any of our 11 schools. And then if you, if let's say your GPA is a little bit lower, but you have at least a 21 on the ACT plus a 2.0 GPA, then you're also admitted into the University of Kansas. And then our freshman scholarships, they're all, like I said before, all based on your cumulative grade point average. So they go anywhere from 8,000 to 16,000 per year. And these are renewable scholarships. So um, if you are wanting to be considered for an academic scholarship and you're a senior this year, make sure you get that application in by December 1st. And if you are working on GPA this semester, you can update your application all the way up to February 1st. And then I know we're uh, short on time. So if you have any questions about the timeline, I would encourage you to kind of take a picture of this. This is basically the senior timeline, um, what you needed to get, to get done in order to become a Jayhawk in the fall. And the main thing I would, I would kind of um, hammer home is the December 1st scholarship deadline. So make sure that you get that application in by December 1st. And then um, the other thing that comes open here in just a week is our housing application. Even if you are admitted student, you're not quite decided, we encourage you to get that housing application in. And then as everyone said, May 1st is our, also our enrollment deposit deadline. And if you have any questions after today, feel free to, to reach out. My contact information is um, listed here. And then we have a number of on-campus and virtual visit opportunities. We also have an off -camp some off-campus events. We'll have one coming up in Dallas in the spring. So, um, so watch uh, your email and text and everything for that. We'll be sending information in the next couple of months for that. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out tonight and rock chalk. Thank you, University of Kansas. Our next institution is Gonzaga University. All righty, thank you. All right, everyone, thanks so much for joining tonight. Uh, my name is Becky. I am a senior admission counselor at Gonzaga University. Uh, we are also on the eastern side of Washington, not too far from my uh, Washington State friends. We're about an hour and a half north. Uh, so yeah, not the uh, rainy, gray Seattle weather. We do have four seasons over here. Uh, but Gonzaga, we are a medium-sized Catholic liberal arts university, and we are in the Jesuit tradition. The Jesuits are kind of like a slice of the pie of the Catholic church. That's how I like to think about them. They are very committed to social justice and education. So that is really the foundation of who we are and how we educate our students. Uh, so we have five different schools for our undergrad students to study under. We have our College of Arts and Sciences. So this covers things like the humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, and the arts. Uh, so lots of opportunities here. We have labs for both the students in the natural and social sciences to do research. We have a podcast recording studio, a TV station, multiple literary publications for students interested in things like media and broadcasting. We also have pre-professional advising programs. Maybe you're thinking you want to go on to medical school or law school or anything like that. Uh, we have advising programs that you can be a part of and have a faculty member who is making sure that you're taking the classes you need to to get into those programs. Our next school is the School of Business Administration. We are also dual accredited in both our business administration and our accounting majors. Uh, so two majors there. Business administration gives you a really broad business background. You tailor your degree by picking at least one concentration. We have 11 concentrations to choose from. You can also create your own. And then accounting would be really specifically if you're wanting to do public or private accounting. We do offer fifth, years, fifth year master's programs um, in our school of business. So a lot of students will come back for an additional year and get their master's in business administration and a master's in tax or master's in accounting. Next school is School of Education. So we have majors in community culture and language, special education, kinesiology and physical education, sport management. We also have teaching certification. So if you wanna teach, that's great. Our School of Engineering and Applied Science, uh, we have majors in computer science as well as computer, civil, mechanical, and electrical engineering. And then our final school is the School of Nursing and Human Physiology, and those are the two majors that they offer. Nursing and Human Physiology, or sorry, Nursing and Engineering are the only two majors that are direct admission at Gonzaga. So if you're interested in either of those majors, 
you do need to declare that on your application. You can always leave the program later if you decide that's not what you want to do, but you do need to declare that when you apply. For a medium-sized school, like I said, just over 4,800 undergrad students. Uh, we have an average class size of 23, student to faculty ratio of 11 to 1. So you definitely get that personal attention, a little bit smaller classes, while also being at a Division I school. We play in the West Coast Conference. We are well known for our men's basketball team. Uh, so if you want kind of that big D1 spirit with smaller classes, uh, this might be a good spot for you. 82% of our students come from over 200 miles away. We do require students to live on campus for the first two years. 63% of our students study abroad. We own a second campus in Florence, Italy. So that's kind of our flagship program, but we do have 60 programs throughout the world that we sponsor. So we highly encourage students to study abroad. I also did not study abroad during college and I also regret it. So highly recommend it. We have over 140 clubs and organizations to be a part of. Our students contribute around 150,000 hours of community service every year. And we have all of these offices on the right to help support our students and however you identify. We are ranked in the top 20 in the nation for undergraduate teaching. 100% of our classes are taught by professors. Their number one priority is teaching our students. Alrighty, so admission, we, we are on the common application. Our application for next fall is up right now. It is due by December 1st. It has, that is our only deadline. We do not have early action or early decision, just the one regular deadline. Uh, we will send out all of our decisions in mid-February, so please don't feel rushed to turn in your application. Nursing and engineering, like I mentioned, those are the only two majors that you have to declare when you apply. Uh, there's just the middle 50% for unweighted GPA and then our test scores there to just kind of give you a sense. We are test optional. We do not need an SAT or an ACT score uh, for admission or for scholarship. So please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about test scores. Happy to have that conversation. We do offer admission interviews. We recommend those for students that are at or below a 3.2 GPA, but we're happy to do them with anyone and everyone just kind of gives us a chance to learn more about you, kind of put your high school experience into context. So feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to do that. When you apply to Gonzaga, you're automatically assessed for our merit scholarships. So those are solely based off the strength of your application and they range from $14,000 to $25,000 per year. They are guaranteed for four years. We have some additional Gonzaga funded scholarships that are an additional application. That app, those applications are due January 1st and all of those scholarships are listed at gonzaga.edu slash scholarships. And then we do recommend all of our students file a FAFSA, a free application for federal student aid. If you are unable to file that, we do have a needs analysis form on our website. As a private university, we have a pot of money. It's called Gonzaga Grant Money. We award to students based off financial need. It is also guaranteed for four years, but we need to uh, essentially know what you need. So we just want to help you out as much as we can. We are a private university, like I mentioned, so we don't have in-state versus out-of-state tuition, and it's just a flat rate for everyone. Um, and 98% of our students receive financial aid um, and scholarships and, and loans and grants and things like that. So really no one is paying full price. So please feel free to reach out to me. I am the admission counselor for students from Texas. So thanks for joining everyone. Thank you, Gonzaga. Our final institution is DigiPin Institute of Technology. Hello, let me share my screen. Okay, are we up? Okay, um, so my name is Amanda Red, and I am with DigiPen Institute of Technology. Um, we were founded in 1988. Um, we are a four-year private college. Uh, our areas of expertise are in computer science, digital art and animation, game design and development, music and sound design. Um, so we are a video game development and interactive media technology institution. We uh, are in the rainy part of Washington, um, uh, in Redmond, Washington, which is about 16 miles east of Seattle, uh, which is, Redmond is a really nice little town. Uh, it's pretty small, um, quaint, quiet, uh, probably not your college town. Um, but it is a good quiet place to uh, study and just to be a student at DigiPen. Um, things to do in the area, uh, downtown Seattle is always really fun. 
Um, so a little bit of the best of both worlds, a uh, quiet little area in Redmond, but if you are looking to do outside activities or just see the Space Needle or do things like Pike's Place Market, which is really fun, um, those options are there as well. Uh, so Redmond is a, a huge game development um, area. So within about 20 miles of our college, there uh, are a little, over 400 uh, either game development or technology companies. Um, so we're very much exposed to the industry and that's proven to be pretty valuable to our students. Um, we actually were the first uh, school to offer a bachelor's degree in video uh, game programming. Um, we have eight undergraduate degrees and two graduate programs, um, and we are consistently ranked among the top uh, five video game schools by the Princeton Review, and that's been ongoing for the last 10 years. Um, we have very small classes, um, 18 students per class. Of course, that depends on your uh, the class and the uh, major, or I'm sorry, degree program that you are in. Uh, we have about 1,200 students, so we are a small school um, and uh, produces a pretty nice, tight little community. Uh, we have been, um, it has been, you know, noted that we are a great school for return on investment. Um, being a four-year private school, uh, we are not an, an inexpensive university or college, but we do um, show the results overall in the return on investment for our students. So our degree programs break down into these four categories, uh, our computer science degrees, um, which we have just your, your basic computer science degree, uh, but then we also have uh, compute, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science Machine Learning. Um, then we have our degrees that are based and more specific for game design and development. Uh, so we have a Bachelor of Arts in Game Design, which is all concept. It's designing user experience. Um, so it's a lot of psychology, history, uh, the components that help determine um, what makes a great game for the user. Uh, and then we have Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Game Design, and that is more of the coding and programming um, that happens for the game once it's been designed or as it's being designed. And then of course, real-time interactive simulation, and that's just ensuring that the graphics and things move as accordingly as they should with the game. It's not much fun playing if they don't operate in the time or in the manner that you like them to. Uh, digital art and animation. So we have fine art, a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Digital Art and Animation. Uh, our professors, all of our professors are outstanding, but um, for digital art and animation, two of our professors, uh, one was with Disney for 25 years um, and one was with Pixar for 18 years. And so they have come to DigiPen to uh, teach for us and they are truly outstanding. They have a great passion for teaching students uh, very hands-on and um, helping them become the best they can be. Uh, and then our music and audio degrees, uh, Bachelor of Arts in Music and Sound Design. So this is creating the music. Uh, we have a studio on campus um, where students can go in and play their instruments or their voice, whatever is their uh, thing. If you play an instrument or voice, uh, you do have four years of private one-on-one -on -one lessons. Um, and so those are all the sounds that go with the game. Um, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Digital Audio. This is programming the, uh, the sound to happen uh, as it occurs in the game. So if you are in a race car and all of a sudden it starts storming, you want that to happen, that sound to happen quickly um, without latency. And so that's actually a very um, sought after career right now. There's not a lot of it, not a lot of available talent. So um, we're having a lot of success with students who are interested in that program. Um, so what makes our program a little bit different than if you were to have a game design um, degree from another university? So we have a sort of a 50-50 approach, uh, which 50% would be your academic fundamentals. So this is your, your lecture classes, your homework, your individual study, um, all of that, much like you're doing now. Uh, and then we add in your sophomore year, um, our project teams, uh, which is our game teams. 
and so students from each discipline. So a musician, uh, an artist, a designer, a developer, they will all form a game team and um, they design a game completely from concept all the way through final product. So um, teaching those different disciplines to work together, um, the soft skills that come, oh, really? Okay. Um, so I would say here are a couple of things to do that will help you when you get along to uh, look into DigiPen, focus on math, um, hone in on the skills that you're most interested in. And um, let's see, here are ways that you can join us online throughout the year. Uh, I encourage you to do that, visit our website. Um, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, my name is Amanda Red. You're welcome to contact me anytime. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, DigiPen. I would now like to invite all of our panelists to join me on video as we have time for a brief Q&A. All right, the question I would like to pose to you all is, one myth you would like to debunk about the college admissions process? And, and feel free to answer in the order you presented. Um, gosh, I would just say that um, if you have the idea that all universities are going to be the same as far as admissions goes, that's just not going to be true. Make sure that you're contacting us. We all love talking to students. So um, shoot us a quick question. If you're not really sure, um, we, we definitely love questions. Going off of that, I was going to say that we uh, we all are here because we work with students and that is what we get paid, like we like to say, the medium bucks to do uh, is to work with you all. And every school um, has admissions counselors just like us that are assigned to students just like you. So reach out, use us to your advantage. Um, that's literally what we get paid to do. So um, I like to say that the biggest thing that I like to tell students is you don't have to know what you're going to major in for and you don't have to know what you're going to do for the rest of your life at 18. So don't worry, um, we have there's a lot of institutions with lots of different majors and it's okay to change your major and decide that you are going to be a nurse one day and now you know what I think I want to be a teacher. It's totally fine. So I think that's the biggest thing is for parents and students to know that it's okay to change your major. I would encourage students to look at both, you know, uh, schools of all sizes, small, large, and just like Alicia said, just really kind of keep your options open. Um, you know, typically students change their major two to three times or more, you never know, but you know, it might surprise you what you end up finding your true academic passion in. Yeah. I don't really know if this is a myth, but I always encourage students to really go off of what college is going to be the best fit for you. I think a lot of students go to the most uh, highly ranked school in, in whatever, and that's great, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to go to a school with smaller classes or a school with big classes, um, don't settle on that just to appease someone else. Uh, make sure that you're really finding the right school where you're going to thrive. So a myth about uh, the admissions process, I would say that likely, um, uh, I think that most admissions um, counselors are really helpful. I think students are a little nervous because they're not really sure what to ask or if they can ask or everybody's so busy or whatever the case is, but I haven't found that to be the case. Um, everyone that I've met from, you know, the admission side, not just with my school, but with every school um, has been really genuinely excited to help um, and want to do their best to make sure that they're helping students, um, you know, make the best decision for themselves. So ask the question. You don't have to have a page of, of questions, you know, to make that call. One question is fine. Um, and so we appreciate it and it makes us excited too, um, to know that we're helping students along with their journey. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing and thank you all for presenting. We are running low on time for today's event. So I would like to share my screen with you one more time before we close out. 
So thank you all as well to our attendees, those who are able to join us live, as well as those who are watching on demand. For our live viewers, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. I also encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more, more sessions today, as well as sessions of available tomorrow. You will be able to find the session recording for this session as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Texas. Thank you all once again, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm.